Hi guys, welcome to the last part of the FR Chem Intermediate SAQ High Yield section. Uh, there are a few important topics in this last session, so please watch it till the end. And don't hesitate to share the video. Do not download these videos. Share the video. Uh, it's free for you to view. Use this knowledge to pass the exam. Use this knowledge to help the patients and keep your patients safe. So we'll start with uh, lung protective ventilation. The questions here could be framed as, what do you mean by lung protective ventilation and what are you aiming to achieve? So lung protective ventilation is low tidal volume, low tidal volume. It is based on the predicted body weight, not the actual body weight, around six ml per kg. And Second is high peep. Third point, if you want to add permissive hypercapnia. Low tidal volume, high peep, permissive hypercapnia. What are you going to achieve? It will reduce or prevent barotrauma, prevent volutrauma. It will prevent development of ARDS, adult respiratory distress syndrome. What is the differentiating point between acute lung injury and adult respiratory distress syndrome? FiO2. You will have to calculate the PaO2 FiO2 mm -hmm. ratio. If it is less than 300 but greater than 200, it is acute lung injury. If it is less than 200, it is adult respiratory distress syndrome. Okay. Low tidal volume, high peak, permissive hypercapnia to prevent ARDS, to prevent barotrauma, to prevent volutrauma. Ultrasonography, very unlikely to be tested for the intermediate, but for the finals, it will be there. It is useful to know if they put these questions in the intermediate. All patients who come to the emergency department with any abdominal symptom, pain in the flank, urinary retention, or pain in abdomen, hematuria, please do a AAA scan. Okay. Get a AAA scan. You should know the basic functions of an ultrasound machine. There's a gain button, there's a depth button. If you adjust the gain, it's like your brightness and contrast on the television. If you adjust the depth, you will be able to see a bigger area versus a area under focus. How would you improve the quality of the images? You can tell the patient to move, change in patient's position or ask the patient to perform different maneuvers like deep inspiration will bring the gallbladder or the kidneys further down and will be visualized well. Okay. Machine related, two buttons, adjust the gain, adjust the depth. Third, environment related, if you dim the light, the images become brighter. Okay. That is your AAA. Outer to outer diameter should not be more than 2.5 cm. Outer to outer. There is a free fluid seen between the lung, uh, between the kidney, it's a right upper quadrant between the kidney and the liver. This is called as Morrison's pouch. So it can be in trauma settings, it's a positive fast scan, right? In peritonitis setting, it's hemoperitoneum or some peritoneal fluid there. Now this is the M mode on the lungs. So when you see the pleura, it should slide normally. But if you have any doubt whether this is a pneumothorax or not, under normal circumstances, you see pebbles Seashore sign. It's called a seashore sign. And seashore should be free of cost, right? People should be able to go at the seashore. So it's normal. Imagine you put a tax on that. Imagine that for entering the seashore, you need to pay some money, get a barcode and pay some money and enter there. That's not normal. That's pneumothorax. That's a barcode sign. sign. Okay. There is free fluid around the heart. There is free fluid around the heart, that's your cardiac tamponade. Okay. 
donut sign seen in intersection intersection if this patient is come with a rash what diagnosis it is uh, we studied in the previous slide a rash uh erythema uh, oh in the face in the rash uh, what rash will be there it will be a purpuric rash which will be non blanching on the back of the leg and not shown and not shown line purpura right they will come with intersusception don't forget to link things next is this is the ultrasound of the side of the next sternocleidomastoid is here carotid artery is here and the internal jugular vein is here so when you press on the vein the vein collapses okay this is a diagrammatic re representation of your groin this is the skin fascia lata and this is the iliacus muscle on the top of that is your fascia iliaca the vessel is over here artery vein and the nerve is over here femoral nerve lateral cutaneous nerve of the thigh so here you're going to block you'll use pipivacaine maximum dose 2 mg per kg body weight you will do stop before you block do you know what is stop before you block yes check for the check for the right patient right side right side just before you are injecting and you should know where your intralipid emulsion is kept in the department post procedure 5 minutes 15 minutes 30 minutes saturation respiratory rate pain score to be monitored let's talk about a little bit of obg work talking about help syndrome and eclampsia okay any female in the reproductive age group is assumed to be pregnant okay so you do a urine dipstick or urine beta hcg okay don't write upt urine for beta hcg or urine pregnancy test now if they come with pain in abdomen beyond 20 weeks if they come with uh, beyond 20 weeks if they come with raised blood pressure edema and proteinuria it is preeclampsia if they get seizure it becomes eclampsia okay if they come with pain in abdomen and pv bleeding it is pain in abdomen it's ectopic Mm. beyond 20 weeks beyond 20. so if somebody comes with pain in abdomen beyond 20 weeks it is placenta previa mm -hmm. it's painful bleeding uh, it's sorry it's painless bleeding placenta previa if it's painful bleeding it is abruptio placenta. placenta painless bleeding previa painful abruptio okay. placenta there may no there may be no bleeding through vagina in abruptio placenta it's called as concealed abruption so if the pain is out of proportion and the patient is still complaining of pain involve the gynecologist if she is pregnant because there may be concealed abruption okay we talked about preeclampsia plus seizure is uh, eclampsia you give magnesium sulfate medications to reduce blood pressure labetalol you can use methyl dopamine hydrolazine but they are not used commonly because it can cause photosensitivity or drug induced lupus help syndrome is hemolysis elevated liver enzymes and low platelets the definitive treatment for any of this condition termination is of pregnancy not termination of pregnancy delivery of the baby use the right words okay don't write cesarean section right delivery of the baby now how they will deliver that is up to the examiner let's talk about traffic light this if you google traffic light you will see a chart which shows green amber and red green goes home amber stays in the hospital or goes home if support is there if parents are happy they are able to take care they are they live very close by to the hospital based on all these situations amber can go home the red ones get admitted in the hospital 
Now people have to memorize this. How do we memorize this? If you remember, the mnemonic chart, C-H-A-R-T, color, hydration, activity, respiratory, and temperature. Okay? You will remember it. Now color, normal color baby is green. If he is a bit pale, as reported by parent, then he becomes amber. If it's reported by physician as pale or ashen or grey or cyanosed, it becomes red. Then activity. In activity, that's it. Smiling baby, neutral baby, inconsolably crying baby. Right? Respiration is stable asthma. This is life-threatening asthma. Hydration, normal, reduced urine output, dry mucous membrane. Here the skin looks very dry. In others, Kawasaki, fever for more than four or five days. This is septic arthritis. This is meningitis or status epilepticus or febrile seizures or complicated febrile seizures okay. Alti versus Brew What is Alti? Apparent life threatening event okay. Apparently the caregiver feels it's a life threatening event and then brings the child to the hospital where you examine the child do everything possible to rule out multiple causes so there may be causes present right GERD or convulsion whatever okay. BREW is brief resolved unexplained event now if they ask me Differentiate between brew versus alti or define brew. It's a brief event lasting less than one minute usually. It is resolved by the time they present to the hospital whereas alti may not have resolved. Yeah. So alti may not be brief. The definition was as perceived by the caregiver. Here you are defining, the provider is defining the condition as brief, resolved, unexplained. There are no cause found. <laughs> no explanation. There, there might be causes. Okay. There is no age limit in RT. <laughs> in BREW, they say usually less than one year. There may be specific cause. There is no other explanation. Carer's perception, clinician's per perception. Three points, three points, good enough. You still want some more, you can memorize these things. These are taken from Google, so you can Google it and see. However, I feel three points here, three points here is good enough. Young female is pregnant. Okay, so if she comes with abdominal pain, it is ectopic. If she comes with shortness of breath, she has permanent embolism. Okay. A young abdominal pain. Please look at the genitals. Children do not do a rectal examination. Please look at the genital. Young abdominal pain will be having testicular torsion. Okay. So always ask sexual history. Adult male or female more than 60, triple A scan. Black population has sickle cell. Bedside investigation is ECG, urinalysis, urine beta-HCG, uh, 
finger stick glucose, venous blood gas, arterial blood gas, portable chest x-ray. Read the question. If this is a bedside test, these are the bedside tests. Lab investigations are hematology and biochemistry. One question they could frame is from your primary. They can ask you the knowledge of primary, just like I asked about abductor policies longest. Similarly, they can frame up questions. So, swelling of the leg is a common presentation. Cellulitis, DVT, always think of compartment as well. So, it can be framed as give the name the compartments of the leg. Two marks, and then we'll say oh, anterior posterior. Remember, it is anterior compartment, posterior superficial, posterior deep, and then there is peroneus compartment. Okay. Know about common scoring systems for the exam purposes because in your practice you will open a med calc and do it, but in the exam, read the TIA scoring system. For TIA, what you'll do? A, B, C, D, 2. For stroke, you will do Rossier scale. For ACS, you will do hard score or Timmy score. For P, you will use either British Thoracic Guideline or Well score or Geneva score. For DVT, you will do Well score. For AF, you will do Chad Vask. For pneumonia, you will do Curb 65. This sums up the high yield topics for your FRCM intermediate. These are based on my understanding of what topics could be tested or if I would have been the examiner, what I would like my trainees to know. If this few videos have been useful guys, I would be very happy if you pass the exam if you use this knowledge. But more than that, I will be happy if you use this knowledge at bedside and save some lives, relieve somebody's pain and suffering. Take care of them who sees you as one who can solve their problems and pass on this knowledge to others. Teach your trainees the right thing. Thank you so much. If there is anything, please do let me know in the comment section and I'll be happy to assist you. Thank you. Thank you.